Hey guys, this room secret um speaker first. I messed up my intro. Yeah. Hey guys, this is Veron from Secret the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a watercolor piece and yes, I did not upload a video last week. This is actually supposed to be the video that went up last week but I didn't finish it so here we are. <laughs> then again, I did say that I'm not super consistent with uploading anymore. And I did kind of hit an art block actually. Um, the past two or three week weeks, I think, I've hit a slight art block. Um, I kind of have ideas of what I want to draw. Some of it is fan art, some of it is original. But the motivation or the drive to draw is kind of not here. <laughs> I was going to say like, it's not at full power, but it's not really here either. So, yeah. Like the last time this happened to me, uh, I didn't draw for six months, and what spurred me to draw again was because of Inktober, and then I ended up doing a Christmas piece and then a New Year piece, and then kind of went on a roll after that. But I noticed that every it's like clockwork. Every around this time of the year, I start hitting like a bit of an art block phase where I do have ideas, but I don't draw or I just end up not drawing. So I think it's an art block. I did draw for work though. Um, the design that I did for work for one of my designs did require me to draw a little bit, but whatever, that doesn't count because that's that's part vectoring and just me painting some stuff over it. Anyway, <laughs> as if to make up for me not posting a video last week, this video is just a couple of seconds it's a second shy, actually, from being a 25 minute video. That being said, that is your warning. So if you're doing stuff, or I mean, if, you, if you're on data, you might want to do something else or watch something else. But, I mean, if you want to, that's your choice. But maybe I would recommend that you watch this if you are doing something else. Maybe you're drawing yourself and you have this in the background. That's something I do myself, actually. I'd open up like 10 tabs from my subscription feed and then just click through that as I draw and paint. Or um, you might be doing some chores, maybe having in the background as well. Um, maybe you're doing the laundry, maybe you're doing the dishes. I don't know. What else do you, what other chores would you do? I don't know. Anyway. Um, but if you do want to watch, I think this would be a bit of an interesting video, especially because the techniques that I employ this time are a little bit different from what I usually do. So if you, you've been watching my channel, um, you know that I have a certain way of doing watercolor. So they kind, they're kind of similar. But this time, I do change up the process just a little bit. And that's mainly because of this. The goal for this piece isn't just pure illustration or anything like that. This is a bit more of a practice, exercise, experimental type of piece for me. So... I wanted to do something that involved light and really strong light. So something that, that would create harsher shadows and not the soft gradient stuff that I usually like doing. And that's what the lantern is for. <laughs> in the piece at least. Um, yeah, that's just the goal. So everything about this piece is supposed to be focused on what the lantern is doing to the, to the rest of the piece. So the subject the vibe, the theme, everything else a bit secondary. But nonetheless, I wanted to make a cute-ish, snuggly-ish piece, so I ended up drawing a guy in bed, maybe with you. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to... <laughs> oh, oh, man, that threw me off. Um, I just wanted to draw a guy that was like cozy in bed, maybe some fluffy pillows and a soft blanket and... You know, this chill, cute, snuggly kind of theme vibe. <laughs> I should. I'm gonna mention it now before I forget. The character that I'm drawing is actually a character that I didn't expect to be a character. Um, he was supposed to be a random drawing or character that I did for the Lantern Prince. I think it's this year's New Year drawing. 
if I'm not mistaken. It could have been the year before that, but I'll just throw up a pic and maybe a link here somewhere. But he was a piece of that character, and I, I guess the design just kind of stuck to me. And I kind of revived him. He may or may not be a real character now. <laughs> and I, th I felt like he was perfect for it because the goal was to do light, and I wanted to do it with a lantern. And his entire character concept when I made him was I wanted him to be like a guardian of sorts that holds like a lantern to guide the way and something like that. So I felt like it was perfect. He was, he was perfect for this piece. Yay. So anyway, let's actually talk about the technique that I'm doing right now. So I am doing a sort of a monochromatic-ish looking purple all over the place right now. That's mainly because that's the... That's sort of like the underlying tint that I want to have for the shadows for this. The idea was that I wanted the, maybe the sheets or the pillows to be kind of purplish and I wanted that to affect the rest of the piece. That's why I'm doing purple on his clothes, on the blanket, on him, on the character itself. And this is what a technique that I learned back in college. And I haven't been... Anyway, let's, let's talk about the technique first. So the technique is that you start with the darker shadows first. So if you're painting a building that has bricks and maybe trees, you would draw maybe the bark of the tree first because it's, that's a dark brown. Maybe you'd draw the the bricks first because that's a really strong color. And then put the shadows of the influencing other parts in it. And then you do the rest of the piece like the leaves and then maybe some other parts of the building that isn't brick. And that has an effect on how the layers, on how the colors layer rather. So even though this is watercolor, it does have some layering effects. And it kind of depends on what paints you're using as well. So let's say you are painting something that is pastel pink. And then you decide to put like a deep blue on top of it. So even though it's transparent and the pink will show through, the blue would be somewhat more for the dominant color because it's on top. Especially if it's just in one area. What we're doing here is that I put the blue down first, since it's the shadow. And if you put the pink on top, the pink kind of shows through a little bit more over the blue. And it helps change the vibe a little bit. Or it helps it make it look a little bit more incorporated and less obvious and maybe it helps a little bit with the murkiness as well. So that's what I'm doing. So I knew that the shirt would be like a dark bluish color and I knew that his hair was like a soft smokyish blue. That's why I started with the purple first. So you kind of see it underneath everything but it's not what you see right away. And that was the point of that particular technique. So the reason I haven't been doing this kind of technique was because I didn't really think that it would have worked with a, that it would have worked well with the way that I draw and paint usually. So I usually do like anime esque type of stuff, um, and I kind of associated it with doing landscapes and still life, and I kind of reserved the technique for those kind of paintings and. Which is silly because my entire goal actually is to learn a lot of techniques and then cross incorporate them around different mediums and different styles. So it's a little bit silly that I did that, but oh well. I might actually doing it I might actually do it a bit more now. Who knows? So since it's been like three, four, five years, no, let's say three or four ish years since I last did that kind of technique, uh I was fumbling a little bit, especially with where I was putting the purple down, I wasn't sure if it was going overboard or anything, and I was worried that it would show through a little bit too much. But in general, as they always say, trust the process. Especially when it comes to art, trust the process. So, since this is a bit of a long video, I might not always talk through the entirety of it, or else my voice will disappear by the end of this entire thing. 
I'm also trying to minimize the amount of times I retake this. So, yeah, I might leave you with some music every now and then. I hope that you'll watch because I actually do find this interesting, even for me. And yeah, enjoy. If you have any comments and questions, feel free to jip to jip. <laughs> Just jip them down in the comments. <laughs> like, drop them down in the comments, rather. I actually originally planned for this video to be a little bit slower than usual because I usually do speed up my speed paints or my drawings mainly because I want to show the entire process but if I do that, it's gonna be like an R. It's gonna be such a long video. And I wanted to be slower with this but because I do things a little bit differently, I also wanted to show a good chunk of it or almost all of it. So this is one of those videos where I feel like I don't want to cut anything out but for the sake of my own sanity and, and the one who's watching it, I cut a little bit here and there and I did end up speeding it up just a little bit. So in reality, I'm not drawing this fast even though it does seem like a plausible speed. I'm actually being really really careful about it because I, I don't want to screw it up. <laughs> so. You might have heard this from other YouTubers or art YouTubers as well, but if you're testing something new or if you're trying something out, do it with something you're familiar with. So if you're not familiar with my channel, watercolor is my main medium. I love watercolor to death. Yeah, I could, I could say that, I guess. It's my favorite medium. I don't think anything else can sway me from watercolor. For a long, long time when I was younger, it used to be digital art, but now it just it's just watercolor. Watercolor is the best <laughs> for now. No, it's definitely the best. I've tried other mediums and for me. <laughs> so many disclaimers. Watercolor is my favorite. It's the best for me. There we go. <laughs> so, so watercolor is my main medium. Kind of went on a tangent there. And the, and I guess the subject is also something that's somewhat familiar. It's an anime-ish type of drawing. An anime-ish anime type of guy. I like drawing cloth, so there's a lot of cloth around here. So the only different variable or factor would be what I'm testing out, which would be harsh lighting. And it's not here yet since I haven't done the entire lighting thing yet, but it should come in pretty soon. And here we are. <laughs> and by soon, I mean right now. So here we go. We're putting down a lot of yellow. I was really nervous about this because I was worried that it would clash with some of the colors and then make it all murky. And that's something that could happen if you're not careful. But I'm glad it worked out. So I'm putting in as much yellow as I can. Like the, the pan for the yellow for this one was just flooded. I really flooded it out to get as much color as I can without being too intense. So we're just gonna spread it all over the place and then figure things out from there actually. So this is the only thing that is scary to me. This entire light 
flooding it with yellow part. Everything else is familiar and comfortable, and that minimizes the amount of intimidation and mistakes that you can make. So, you know your medium, you know your subject. The only thing that's changing is this one little thing that could make or break it. So even if I did fail, for example, if everything went murky or maybe I overdid the shadow, if I didn't do enough light, I know that it wasn't com- it, it's my fault. But I mean, the the blow to my pride isn't as bad <laughs> because I know that it's an experiment for once. I really shouldn't go in expect- expecting perfection, but I know that. I, it wasn't because I suck at art. It's because I was just testing something out new and I did everything like I would usually. So, it's fine. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to put it. Choose familiar stuff. Change one thing a little bit so that it doesn't damage your pride so much as an artist. <laughs> okay, so now that you've done the flooding the entire place with yellow part. I'm starting to drop in a little bit more shadows. I'm trying to deepen them up a little bit, adding it a little, adding a little bit more saturation. I'm also using purples and blues here and there so that the entire piece is um, tied in together. So in general, the suggestion is to have a limited color palette. So as you can see here, it's this yellow, it's the rosish reddish and a pinkish color over there, blue and purple. So what I'm doing is I'm taking those, essentially those three colors and applying them throughout the piece so it's not disjointed. So for example, the, the bed sheet I guess has some purple in it and the pillows itself is purple-ish. It has some blue for shading because that's what the character's color is, so that ties the blue in. And the yellows, the lighting, so it's gonna be everywhere. And that's how you make it look more cohesive and more, you know, smooth and nice and all of that. <laughs> At this point, I was kind of content with how I did it. Like, I just flooded the place with yellow. It was kind of close to what I imagined, and I was kind of happy with that. And then I showed the pic to my best friend and she said that you could darken the shadows a bit more. I was a little resist resistant at first with that comment because I was scared because I was scared that if I darken the shadows more, it would become murky or I felt like the paper wasn't taking the paint as much anymore. But apparently, I just needed to let it dry. So I let it dry overnight. I put a big book, like one of my dictionaries on top of it and let it dry. When I came back the next morning, I guess the paint has dried already, obviously. So the paint or the colors were a little bit more faded than what it is during it was wet. And this is something I learned recently from, I don't remember, I think it was Art a la carte who said it, that, or was it, anyway, it was someone, some other YouTuber said that in their video that watercolor tends to fade a little bit when it dries. So I did notice it this time that it did fade and it's because I didn't finish this in one sitting. So a lot of my paintings and drawings, I can finish it in one sitting. So by the time I'm looking back at it, I don't really notice that it faded. But since I worked on this in essentially five days-ish, um, two days-ish for sketching and lining and the rest was just painting, I did notice that it faded and now I can add more color and darkness and shadows to it without the fear of it mixing or being murky. But I thought, how can I make this darker? It's already blue. I'm using a really, I'm using the deepest, darkest blue in, in the pan. What do I do? So I first tried out black, but black, the black in the Sakura Koi is yellow tinted ish, I feel. So I decided to use paints gray, and that did the trick. So I'm not using paints gray really, like straight from the pan. As you can see, I'm, I put it on the palette first, and so that that the goal for that is that it's not as saturated or intense on the brush. Because I am patting it on the palette first, I can add more water a little bit, and I can 
make the color a bit more transparent so that the shadows aren't super clear cut and jarring. So this one thing I noticed actually with um, pan paints, I think. So when I used to use this paper, I used tube paints, which is the Reeves watercolor tube paints. I still have those. I don't use them as often anymore because pan paints are a bit more convenient. But uh, disclaimer, I feel like as a beginner, if you're really like, if you're not the type to get intimidated easily, I guess, or how do you put this? If you want to learn a lot of techniques, or I don't know how to put it. Because here in YouTube, we use pan paints a lot, and I get it. I get why we do it. It's super convenient. It's easy because the colors are already there. But I feel like if you want to learn certain techniques, like with color mixing and water control, start with two paints. They are intimidating as hell, but it teaches you so much with. With the color mixing, I learned techniques on how to control and mix colors to get the color that I want and to be able to mix consistently. With water control, I didn't buckle the paper so much. I, I kind of buckled this a little bit because I'm out of practice and out of touch, but that, that was just such a good learning experience, mainly because tube paints, even though they're scary because you, you feel like you could squeeze out so much in just one fish it does it, it teaches something so if you've been only using pan paints I would suggest that you can try out the tube paints they're a little different obviously but they're also not as intimidating as you would think they are pan paints are great because it's pre mixed it's fun the only thing I'm having a hard time with pan paints are that are the mixing part so because you use water to activate the paint it doesn't... How do you put this? The mixing feels weird to me. Because I'm used to like the gloopy... <laughs> the gloopiness of pan... of tube paints. So when I feel like when I'm mixing... Um, pan paints, I feel like I'm not... Getting the, the right color payoff from it. I mean, I could do it. It just... It's just a bit harder for me. And I guess that's one of the differences that I found between... Tube paints and pan paints. And this coming from someone who started out with tube paints. Other than that, it's pretty it's pretty great. I feel like there's some differences with how the paint spreads, but that could be also because of the Sakura paints paints themselves. Do you because you know how this like between these two palettes or between these two yeah, right, this between these two pans, the way that the, the Sakura Takaga and Saitambi spread it's different from how the scooter scooter spread, so it's it might be the paint, and I don't think Reeves has a pan paint option either. But anyway, that's the main difference that I saw. It was with the mixing. I feel like I could mix and control my paint colors more with tube paints. Uh, pan paints are just super handy, and they're easy to whip out and paint with. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I really feel like. If you have the, the time, the money, the confidence, or the willingness to experiment, do try out tube paints. They're not as scary as you think it is. Anyway, at the end of the video, my voice is tired. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. Follow me on Facebook. Well, like or subscribe if you enjoyed this. And then follow me on these socials over there on the right side if you want to see more. 
see you around.